There's an old Chinese proverb, know the past, know the future. And it couldn't be any more true than what it is for when it comes to market research. Unless you've done any market research into your product's pricing, into the types of features that you want to go live with your product, into your target audience, into what sort of advertising and promotions your target audience is going to respond to, you know absolutely nothing and you're truly shooting in the dark as to whether or not you're going to be successful or not in business. You might, uh, I would say, a one in a thousand chance get lucky, but chances are you're setting yourself up for failure if you don't do any market research. Now, in my career, I see plenty of marketers uh, just forget about market research. They seem to think that a couple of years uh, industry experience or gut feel or a little bit of knowledge of uh, the types of products or what they might uh, want to see in a product or a promotion or what they might uh, be happy to pay for it is adequate. And then they just jump straight ahead to developing a product and uh, coming up with some promotions and they just don't have any knowledge uh, to help them uh, do a better job. And some of the best marketers and best business people uh, that I've seen out there, even if they've had, say, 40 years experience in the industry, just marketing in one particular industry, and they've been a marketing manager in that industry for like 40 years, they'll still do market research at least annually just to confirm what they think they know. Because until they've got that market research back confirming what they think they know, they recognize that they know nothing up until then. So, let me make a few examples uh, here. You might want to do some research, obviously, into uh, your competitors' pricing. If you're, going to, if you're going to market with a new product, the first thing you really want to do is try and understand what is being offered at what price in the market, and what sort of features tend to fit around each of those price points. But then you probably want to do some research into what features are actually valuable to consumers. Are there some features that uh, consumers really want but no one else offers it? And therefore you could come up with a fantastic product if you just took the time to do the research and learn about that. Or are there some features uh, in the market that no one's using and you could actually uh, come to market with a much more competitively priced product just by dropping uh, some features that no one wants. What, are, what do people want about the look and feel of your new product uh, going forward? How will, uh, or what sort of advertising are people going to respond to? Where are they uh, spending most of their time? Are they on social media or, are your, or, or is your target audience someone who might be responding more to, say, printed advertising? than uh, social media. Believe it or not, social media is not the be-all and end-all when it comes to promotions and marketing still in 2020 and 2021, and I would say in 2022 and going forward. The thing to remember, and I've said this before in my other videos and on my blog, is that ego and past success means nothing. You need to drop these things because they will convince you as a smart marketer that you can't lose. You know, I absolutely love the quote in the movie uh, Pirates of Silicon uh, Valley where Bill Gates uh, just says, you know, success is a menace. It convinces smart people that they can't lose. That is a fantastic quote for me and I tend to remember it every day and I try and remind myself that I should forget about uh, any past successes that I might have had and I need to focus on research and planning for the future in order to be successful in uh, the future. I need to drop any ego associated with past successes that I may have had. So how do we undertake market research? Well, at its very basic level, we might have a look at all of the competitors' uh, products out there if we're planning on going to market with a new product. We will search them, we'll find out where uh, they're being sold and for how much, what their packaging look might look like, what their advertising looks like, and we'll get a bit of an idea on the lay of the land. But then we might actually look at some qualitative and quantitative research techniques 
in order to learn more about our target audience and what they're going to respond to. Now, qualitative market research is things like a focus group, and that's where you might get, say, 10 to 20 of your target customers in a room, and you're going to ask them a lot of open-ended questions to get a conversation going about how they feel about your proposed product. And then we might look at both some qualitative and quantitative market research techniques to give us the knowledge that we need to go forward in bringing a new product to market and promoting it. I'll explain the difference by imagining that we are about to go to market with a new uh, bicycle puncture repair gel. So I'm a keen cyclist as well as a photographer and to explain what uh, this is, uh, it's a product that uh, comes in a can and it's a gel-like substance that you pump into your bicycle tires so that if you go over a fawn or a piece of glass or something like that and you create a puncture, this gel which is spinning around in your tires kicks into action, uh, goes straight over the, the hole, dries out very quickly and seals up the puncture so that you can keep riding that day. It's really cool. So. If we were wanting to go to market with this new bicycle puncture repair uh, gel, or preventative uh, gel is what I should really be calling it, and we wanted to do some qualitative market research, so say a focus group, we might put some posters up in some bicycle uh, retailers or stand around uh, in areas where uh, cyclists uh, tend to uh, hang out, and we'll invite say 10 to 20 keen cyclists to our focus uh, group. Before the focus group, we might have given them some prototypes of the product. And we might have uh, given them a few different uh, nozzles to try out. And we might have given them a few different uh, pumps to try out for this uh, product as well. And in the focus group, we'll ask a lot of open-ended questions about how they went with the product. Was it easy to use? Did you find that uh, the nozzle uh, worked well with the type of valve that uh, you've got on your bicycle tire? Was the pump easy or would you prefer something that was more of a compressed air system? And we'd also ask some questions about what sort of pricing these cyclists are currently prepared to uh, pay and what they might pay for our product. And we'd ask some other questions like, do you read any magazines uh, to do with cycling? If they all uh, highlighted one particular magazine, we'd think, ah, oh, that could be a good one to advertising, uh, to advertising. Or are you a part of any Facebook uh, groups and therefore should we tailor some digital uh, marketing uh, towards these people? Obviously, we'd also ask other questions like, what is the biggest problem for you with uh, competitive products on the market? And are there features of competitive products that we're lacking here? Or are there features of competitive products that you're simply not using and you're sick of paying for? We'll then be able to come out of that focus group with a lot of knowledge. The argument here is that a focus group is only going to be 10 to 20 people. You might be able to do a whole load of focus uh, groups, but it does take a lot of time. When a lot of uh, big companies tend to do focus uh, groups, so say a Ma when McDonald's does a focus group, who generally shows up to uh, McDonald's? People who are already customers of McDonald's and are going to keep buying McDonald's anyway. So there's a chance that that focus group won't give the marketers any knowledge about what else uh, they could be doing to bring more people into McDonald's. Anyway. That brings me on to the next uh, type of market research, which is quantitative market research, and that's surveys. Me, personally, as a bit of an uh, Excel junkie, I really like surveys, because I kind of like the hard digital data and seeing things on a graph. It gives me a bigger picture on uh, the market for the types of uh, products uh, that I'm involved with and it means that we can uh, get feedback from a much uh, wider um, uh, spectrum of people as well to learn a lot more about a wider spectrum of people, but you can only ask certain types of questions and obviously you can't really get a conversation 
uh, happening to uh, find out something really cool about a niche, which is what you tend to be able to do with qualitative market research. So let's go back to our survey. And let's imagine for a moment that we gave away 500 free samples of this puncture repair kit to uh, yeah, 500 uh, cyclists. And we said in our uh, survey, are you a cyclist who goes off road a lot? Tick yes or no. And uh, we might say get 300 people uh, come back and say yes, uh, they're people who are off road. So then we know that 60% of uh, cyclists uh, sampled are off road. Therefore, we've uh, got an idea that 60% of the cycling uh, market might be interested in our product. And then we'll say, what type of tire valve have you got on your bike? Are you using a car valve or a Presta valve? And uh, we might say get 50% or probably get about 40% uh, would say Presto uh, valve and 60% would say car valve, uh, just really thinking about it and uh, what cyclists uh, tend to have. Then we've uh, got an idea on uh, what type of uh, nozzle we should be producing more of for our uh, tire gel repair kit. Then we'll say, did you find the product easy to use, yes or no? If a whole load of people tick no, then we know we've got a problem and we should be going back to more of a focus group type approach. If a whole load of people tick yes, then we know that we're on to a good thing. Then we should ask uh, the question, would you gladly pay $69.95 for this product? And if a whole load of people tick yes, then we know we're on to a good thing. If a whole load of people tick no, then we know we've uh, got to find out why. Then we might ask the question, what other products uh, do you use? And if say, uh, 80, 90% of them come back uh, talking about one uh, specific competitor's uh, product, then we should, then we know we have to go and have a look at that product and try and understand why. Is it a unique feature that that product is offering? Is it really well priced in the market? Is it just readily available in just about every bicycle uh, store? Or have they been doing something specific with their promotions? Or is it obviously a combination of all of that? We should be trying to understand that. Now, the last part of market research, which I uh, tend to do, and you remember, uh, well, you know when you're playing a computer game and you can put it into uh, God mode so that uh, you can uh, be invincible? This is kind of what I uh, like to talk about as uh, God mode when it comes to market research. When I learned about it, uh, I uh, love to do it all the time, and that's reverse market, market research. What that uh, is for me is I look at all of the product lines that I'm responsible uh, for and I calendarize or I chart them uh, as far as sales and um, as many uh, and also amount of uh, customers who are uh, ordering uh, them, individual uh, web traffic. I track all of that back by years and on that uh, chart I make little notes uh, to indicate what uh, competitors might have been doing at the time, uh, if I ran any new promotions, if I changed the price on something, if I brought a new feature uh, to market uh, for that uh, product. And I look for changes in uh, product um, uh, sales volumes and uh, in customer uh, volumes uh, for the product as well. And I'll also factor in other um, factors as well. So if I'm making, say if I was doing carpets I, um, and I saw a massive spike in uh, home carpet sales, I would uh, try and get an understanding, was this to do with say a government grant for people building or renovating a new home or was this actually uh, to do with um, the fact that a competitor went out of business or was this uh, because of a new contract uh, one with a uh, home builder? Or was this uh, down to a uh, promotion where we might have done some beautiful photography and some uh, wonderful uh, houses showing off how wonderful these carpets uh, can look? And I put those uh, photographs into magazines and on social media channels. It gives me the knowledge to understand uh, what was successful and what wasn't. And it helps me uh, also see problems. For example, if I see 
uh, a certain group of customers dropping off and not buying a uh, product anymore, I'll talk to the sales uh, people responsible and say, hey, what's going on here? What are we getting wrong? Have I done something wrong here? Do we need to actually uh, relook at the promotions or do we need to relook at the pricing uh, structure here? So that to me is what market research is all about. Please have a look at the article that I've got on uh, my blog. I'd love to uh, hear from you. If there's other marketers out there, let's uh, get some discussion uh, happening. would love to know what you think as well.